The first thing I have to do as kind of a prelude is that uh, airplanes are really sort of old technology. The engine was designed in the latter 40s, the engine that we have. It's kind of developed since then. Um, but the engine is much more like the engine that might have been in a 1950s or 1960s automobile. For those of you that haven't had the pleasure of owning one of those, they had points distributors, they had uh, spark plugs. We tended to have to set the timing and dwell on them every 5, 10, 12,000 miles. Sometimes you had to replace spark plugs every 5 to 10,000 miles. And they just required a lot of maintenance. Uh, normal, normal for those engines of that era. And our engines are more like that. Uh, and so there's a few things that are important to think about on your engine your aviation engine. Uh, one of those is that uh, they are not like your modern Tesla. They are not like your modern Chrysler, Ford, Chevy car. Uh, when I look up the spark plug interval replacement on my wife's 19, 2019 Dodge, it's 100,000 miles to replace a spark plug. If, uh, a, a standard spark plug on our engines is more like 500 hours. So it's a, it's a very short interval. I have a customer that came to me for his first annual, and it was his first airplane, and he had bought it right after he had gotten his private pilot's license. He had the annual done, and he said to the director of maintenance, thank you very much, what should I do next? And the answer was, well, you're good for a year, just schedule another annual in a year, and I'll see you in a year. <laughs> he took that to heart, literally, and when he brought the plane for me, to me for annual inspection, he had flown it for 154 hours. In that 154 hours, he had not done any service at all. He had not changed his oil. He had not serviced his battery. He had not checked his brakes. The, airs, the air in the tires were quite low. They were sitting low because they were low on air. Um, and uh, I asked the gentleman, you know, had he done any maintenance? And he's like, well, no, they said I didn't have to. Now, let me be very clear. Airplanes require maintenance. You should be changing your oil every 25 to 40 flight hours. No question about it. We have very dirty engines. We run leaded fuel. Uh, that accumulates in the engine, and it must be gotten out of there. You should put your engine on some sort of maintenance regimen. Uh, a good one is to change the oil frequently. Every time you change the oil, you should do an oil analysis so you can track any kind of wear metals in your engine to see if what's going on. You should plan on having an inspection done on the engine at 100 hours. Even if it's not at annual, uh, or time for an annual. 100 hours is a lot of time for those engines, and they need to have their spark plugs removed, cleaned, gapped, and rotated, and put back in. Uh, you need to check the timing. We have uh, parts inside the magneto that we'll wear. There's points in there that are opening and closing. You, you should check the timing, ignition timing, on your magneto. It will wear, and it will move. Um, there's nothing you can do about it other than stay on top of it. If you take it to your shop at 100 hours and ask for 100 hours service, um, you're going to find that it runs smoother, starts easier, it's going to last longer. Uh, these are maintenance intensive uh, products uh, and the only way to ensure your safety and your passenger safety as well as a long uh, service life for the engine is to simply take care of it. Well, we are blessed to have uh, really nice engine instrumentation in every Cirrus that was ever built. Uh, we can watch things like the exhaust gas temperatures, the cylinder head temperatures, and we can uh, uh, use those to make determinations on what's moved. Now you're going to say, well, what moves? What should I be looking for? The first thing I would say is know your baselines. In a typical cruise configuration, what kind of cylinder head temperatures are you seeing? What kind of exhaust gas temperatures are you seeing? All things being equal, the next time you fly, those should be the same, or reasonably the same. When you start to see something like the cylinder head temperatures typically dropping 10 to 20 degrees, and the exhaust gas temperatures rising perhaps 10 or 20 degrees, what's happened is the ignition timing has worn, it's moved, it's in a retarded state, and you're not producing as much power, therefore your cylinder head temperatures are dropping, you're not burning all your fuel in the cylinder, some of it's burning in the tailpipes, your exhaust gas temperature is rising. These are very subtle shifts. They're only going to be noticed if you are paying really close attention and know your baselines. And that's a really important thing to get to learn and understand. You'll be busy learning how to fly your airplane and doing the pilot stuff that are necessary, flying approaches and how do I 
fly and land the airplane. Uh, at some point, you really need to transition to, uh, to be a complete pilot of a Cirrus. You need to transition to really understanding the fine points, what the engine's telling you on that engine, engine monitor. At any given power setting, any given altitude, any given fuel flow, you should see similar performance. And some things like true airspeed. A lot of people, a lot of pilots today look at speed and they look at their GPS and they say, I'm going 178 knots. Well, sure, you are going 178 knots over the ground. But well, how fast is the airplane going through the air? I don't want to know indicated airspeed. I want to know true airspeed that's compensated for temperature and altitude. For a given set of settings, you should always see a roughly similar true airspeed, TAS, on your display. And if it's starting to slow down three, four, four five knots, Something is not working like it used to, and more than likely, it is a, a change in ignition timing that's worn, and you're not getting as much power out of the engine, and it will show up in speed first. There are some wonderful tools about that. First of all, all the engine monitors installed by Cirrus um, have uh, the ability to record data. It's a little different on an Avidyne airplane versus a Garmin perspective airplane, but they do record the data. That data can be uploaded to a variety of sites. Uh, the Savvy organization runs uh, uh, an engine monitoring uh, tool, and you can actually sign up for that for free and upload your data. You can also pay a small fee, and they will analyze your data for you if you're uncomfortable with what it's telling you. There's another company by the name of flightdata.com, and they do the same thing. You can upload the data to them and look at it. And, l and lately, there has been a tool coming online called Flysto, that has a number of features, not just about engine, they also add things like uh, flight and aircraft performance. What is your rate of ascent, rate of descent, uh, how stable has your approach has been, that sort of stuff. I encourage anybody that's uh, flying a Cirrus to take advantage of all of those tools to become a better pilot and a better custodian of their airplane. There are two that I know of off the top of my head. One is Aviation Oil Analysis, AOA. They're based out of Phoenix. And uh, you send a sample to them, and they'll an analyze it, and they'll send it back to you. There's another company. The one I prefer is Blackstone Laboratories. They're in the Midwest, and it's the same idea. You capture some oil after uh, changing your oil. You capture some of the outgoing stream, and you send it to them. And they run it through a spectrograph and tell you what the wear metals are. They look for things like copper, nickel, uh, aluminum, steel. And they can tell you things like this engine's been sitting too long, because I'm picking up a lot of steel, it looks like it may be uh, some rust that is scraping off the rings, or I see a high nickel content, maybe you should check your valves. Uh, those are more like going to the doctor and getting a blood test and your doctor says your cholesterol is a little high. You're not gonna go in for heart surgery because your cholesterol is a little high, but you got a warning. And uh, with that information, you may be able to change some of your behavior uh, and improve the uh, service life of the engine. Well, there's a lot of things that can happen to the airframe that we have to watch. Um, the uh, airframe is overseen very closely by Cirrus aircraft, and they issue a number of service advisories, service bulletins, service information letters, SILs. Um, from those, you can determine actions that they recommend you take. Now, you don't have to take action on those, and some of those you may not want to, but most of those are worth at least reading, understanding, and deciding if you want to have that done. I have some on my airplane where they wanted me to change a decal, and I didn't think that was particularly relevant, so I didn't care. Uh, on, on the other hand, there's one that's just been put out on uh, modifying the seat tracks uh, in case, uh, like the old Cessnas, uh, they could slide backwards on you if you don't, uh, during takeoff at a very bad time, if you uh, don't seat the pins correctly. While I think the Cirrus seats are very well designed and the pins are uh, pretty easy to determine in the right place, this is a good safety addition, so it's something worth watching. You go to cirrusaircraft.com, go to the tech area and ask for service bulletins for your serial number airplane, and you'll get every single service bulletin, service advisory, or SIL that's available for the airplane. From there, you can study them and decide whether that's for you, something you want to do, or it's something that you're okay not doing. It is your decision. Well, I like to think of uh, the airplane as just a mechanical thing. Uh, it doesn't have a life or a soul. But you are going to put lives and souls in the airplane, yourself, your family, friends. Uh, it's important to stay up on the safety aspects of it and the maintenance aspects of it so that you can ensure that the airplane is as in as good a condition as it can be 
for the intended purpose. Um, there are some people that think it's just, you know, it's, it, it's fine, it's been in the hangar, nobody's heard it, nobody's bumped into it, it must be fine to fly. And it could be that way for years. Uh, unfortunately, airplanes don't really work that way. You really need to stay on top of the maintenance. It's really a good idea to find a mechanic that you trust. It could be a shop, a large service center that Cirrus uh, has a large network. Uh, you can also find A&Ps on the field that may be what we call those hired guns or private tiers and they will come to your hangar and work in your airplane. But it's very important to have a network of maintenance professionals that you trust, that you've built a good relationship with, and you can call and have things checked. Because not everything uh, is dangerous if it's wrong, but there are some things that can be very dangerous if they're wrong and you want professionals to assess it.